everyone, welcome to another edition of the Bolt City Podcast. Dave Pele, Josh Pele, the guy that, that's a big fan of using the sunroof in the summertime, Mario Heron, looking a little bit Ooh. Right. Good one, Dave. Yes. Joins us right yeah. now, it's Fernando Ramirez I got from so the many Sporting laughs. Tribune. <laughs> Fernando, got to ask you right off the bat. I know everything I say seems to be kind of a negative, but is Austin Eckler done complaining about running backs and getting paid? Or are we just going to focus on football? Uh, it seems like it is. And Mario, look, there we go. This is what it is. You just, you just <laughs> yeah. need some, put it yeah. on, and and you're good to go. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> hey, I've been using it. Training camp gets really rough. It's hot. Yeah. It's bad. So, But, yeah, it's uh, it seems like he's kind of turned the page on it. Obviously, it just seems like more and more running back stuff is coming out now. You have Jonathan Taylor with the uh, Colts. You have other stuff. Uh, Saquon got paid, uh, so you, you got some of that other stuff. But Austin basically said it's time now to turn the page, time to focus on the team, and they're ready to go. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see the way kind of Kellen Moore is going to use them in this offense. But he says that he feels like they're going to use them in, separate, in different ways. He also said that he hopes that he is with the Chargers uh, for years on, for years to come, that he hopes it's not just this season and then they let him walk in free agency, that he hopes he can be back with the team because he loves the group. He believes in what the Chargers are doing. He uh, believes in uh, what Brandon Staley is doing and and uh, and that he hopes that he can play here uh, for years to come. But that will uh, that'll kind of depend on the way he plays and if anybody else, if Isaiah Spiller, if uh, Joshua Kelly, if any of those guys can – kind of um get up to speed then maybe they say you know what they do what uh matt miller said you draft a running back or you get a running back once his contract's over you go to uh draft another running back like you know that whole cycle so but uh as of right now every uh, charger on they pay justin herbert everything's good to go now it's just focusing on camp and then focusing on the season and staying healthy obviously speaking of staying healthy jc jackson last season was hurt uh he wasn't himself when he did play have you heard anything or seen anything from J.C. Jackson that would make us happy? And also, Quinnen Johnson, is it realistic to say that he's going to be the number three wide receiver this season? I mean, if we're going, Quinnen Johnson looks fast. Like he he looks uh, he looks really good. Uh, I, I, in the longest yard, when uh, when they asked the inmate guy about Nelly, he's like, "Is he fast? Like he's fast. He makes fast people not look fast. Like that's exactly <laughs> what uh, that's exactly what Quinnen Johnson is." Uh, he's burning right by corners. It's funny. I think it was Asante Samuel Jr. tried and no pads on. Try to jam him at the line, and he was able to evade him, move to the side, and kind of take off. And you're like, whoa! Like that's his release. So his release is pretty good. Uh, I think teams are going to be distracted by Keenan Allen, by Mike Williams, by Austin Eckler. That he could come open and he could do some damage. But uh, Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, and and Brandon Staley said, don't forget about Josh Palmer. Josh Palmer is going to be a big part of our offense this year, so uh, I wouldn't forget about Josh Palmer. But there should be, uh, there should be a big sense of excitement from Charger fans because of Quentin Johnston, and and rightfully so. I mean, the kid has really shown out the first three practices, but obviously they don't have pads on, and it'll be interesting to see kind of what he does uh, when they uh, when they get the pads on, and then uh, if he plays preseason games because typically the Chargers just let their rookies go one drive take them out and that's it. Well, they're number one pick, but uh, back to J or what JC Jackson, uh, Brandon Saley said that they're going to take it slowly with him. They want him to kind of rev up and, and, uh, and kind of take str positive strides. And that's what he's done. He's been in a couple in, in on a couple seven on sevens. He's been in a couple 11 on 11s. He had a really good pass deflection on Keenan Allen the other day, obviously again, no pads, but uh, they want to take it slow with him. And he said, he told us back in uh, early June when we spoke to him, he said, I'm going to be I'm a student of the game again. Like I'm I'm uh, I've taken this time to really go through the playbook, understand it. I've picked the brains of Derwin James, of other guys that really understand it to get a sense of what my responsibility is. And uh, obviously, Brandon said that they're going to do as much as they can. But if J.C. Jackson's back and they have Jazier Taylor, Michael Davis, Sonny Samuel Jr. and him then uh, they have a pretty good uh, secondary, which is obviously what you want, but it heavily counts on him being healthy, one, and two, understanding the playbook, understanding his responsibility, and being able to not be a liability like he was. Last year, the only game that I thought he was actually not that bad in was the 
Chiefs game. And that one, he gave up a 40 yard touchdown, but he, he didn't have safety help over the top by Nazir Adderley. But, uh, but still, he can't be a liability out there um, because obviously the secondary is going to need him to play, especially right off the bat. You, you play Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle and uh, Chosen Anderson. I love that. And chosen. Chosen Anderson. So he's going to have to be, they're going to have to be on their game uh, right off the bat. Yeah, and practices with no pads on leads to running backs always thinking they scored. Uh, I remember a football coach told me that, and that's the most classic line of all time. Uh, we have Fernando Ramirez from the Sport Tribune on with us in Bolt City. Uh, I wanted to ask, this was something I've been seeing on social media, been even reading about as well, is that Mike Williams is lining up in the slot a little bit in Moore's offense. What does that kind of look like in camp so far, the benefits of that with Williams lining up more in the slot? And just overall, how's Moore's offense been looking so far to start camp? uh they're going down the field a lot you've seen it it's it hasn't just been mike like i know mike and by the way they need to change his name he's not 80 20 anymore i, I think he's more 90 10 when they mm -hmm. throw down the field to him because he always makes big grabs but keenan's been going down the field quentin johnson josh palmer uh what's his name i got the list right here john hightower john hightower has been another guy who's been going down the field and uh, it, you could tell they're going to be vertical they're going to be going down the field they're going to be doing a lot more uh, with their offense, just that they haven't shown much. Uh, all you see is that Justin throws a beautiful ball and they're getting open. But uh, Mike Williams in the slot, uh, Kellen Moore spoke about it. Keenan spoke about it. They said it's just going to – and Brandon Saley, they just said it's going to help uh, do a lot more things. Brandon Saley uh, put the equivalent of basically LeBron James going up against a point guard uh, when they, they've done that at times. Defensively, it's going to be rough for the point guard to be able to guard somebody that big. So at times, I mean, he's been guarded by Asante Samuel Jr. And it, 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 I mean, no, no knock on Asante, but that's just tough. Mike is six foot four, six foot five, almost. He has a big frame. It's hard to go down the field with him. So he, he is really, uh, Mike has shown a lot of improvement. I thought the last two seasons, two, three seasons. And, um, and this year, I, I think he, his role is going to increase even more. Just because uh, I feel like the the different ways that Kellen Moore is using him is just going to help this offense uh, take that next step. So yeah, they're using him in the slot. They're using him uh, in different different varieties. They're really trying to mix and match these guys around, and they're showing each guy how to play two or three different positions so that they understand just in case if something happens. But uh, but yeah, Mike is Mike has literally caught almost everything coming his way. So uh, he's had so far a strong beginning to to camp. Fernando, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you ask this week the question: How difficult is it for the skill players to learn how to go vertical instead of horizontal? <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll do it. I mean, I, I don't mind. <laughs> Who do you want me to ask, dude? You could ask any skill player on the offense. Just a complete <laughs> shot at Lombardi for what we had to put, what he put us through a year ago. Insane. All right, no, it, 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 it's night ahead. and day. But that's why I'm wondering. Like everybody's like, "Oh, the the Broncos are going to turn it around." And I'm like, but they have Joe Lombardi at offensive core. Like, how are they expected <laughs> yeah. to turn this around? Like, I mean, obviously they're going to be better and everything. Anything's better than what they had. But, I mean, I saw exactly what Joe Lombardi's offense was. And yeah. maybe that fits Russ. Maybe that does because his arm strength might not all be there anymore. Maybe that kind of offense fits. I mean, that's what I was telling somebody the other day. I'm like, it felt like. He was coaching. Uh, he was the offensive coordinator for a quarter, a forty-year-old quarterback who had no more arm strength, like Drew Brees. And it's like, dude, you have a twenty-four-year-old Justin Herbert who has a howitzer for an arm, and you're just not taking advantage of it. But also, I guess it's because uh, they thought that the only one that could go down the field was Mike Williams, except for Jalen Guyton, who had gotten hurt. But it's like now you're seeing Keenan Allen go down the field. Keenan last year, towards the end of the season, he was going down the field a lot. That game against the Raiders, that four down catch, the game against the um, the Chiefs, he caught that one uh, on third down when he was down the field. So Keenan can go down the field, but it's just for some reason everybody's wanting to use him as at what he's good at, which is getting off the ball, the slants, because uh, Keenan can run the whole route tree. But uh, but I don't know for what reason they haven't used him like that. And it feels like this year they're finally going to use Keenan Allen uh, in a different way. But that's one of my biggest takeaways, by the way. Keenan Allen is – he's so far lights out. Like the dude's been catching everything thrown his way. So I think Keenan Allen might be in for a, a huge year this year, especially with the way that Kellen Moore is going to uh, – is so far the way he's kind of used him. I feel like Keenan's in for, for a big year. Fernando, is there any indication that uh, Dayan Henley or Thule 
or it's going to make a big impact. Any rookies. I know obviously we have a new punt returner and kick returner, but the punt yeah. and kick return isn't what it used to be. You know, they kind of phase yeah. it out of the game. Do you think either one of those two guys is going to have a big impact? Deion Hendley's knocked down like three or four passes so far in practice. Uh, and they've all been like close to interceptions. You could tell he kind of knows what is happening on the field. You can tell he's a student of the game. Um, so he's been pretty impressive. Thule is uh, Thule just – I think he's going to be more when the pads come on. You're going to see more from him. But uh, Joey Bosa was speaking about him the other day, and he's like, he calls me sir. Like, I don't like that. Like, I'm not that much older than you. But in reality, Bosa is like eight or nine years older than him. But uh, but he's like, Joey joked. And obviously, people don't understand jokes on Twitter or X or whatever the hell you want to call it. But <laughs> I put uh, – because I put the Joey Bosa's quote. He's like, he probably knows the playbook more than I do. And that's the thing. Tuli has been a st- – uh, has been a student of the game. Uh, guys have said that he's picked Khalil Mack's brain. He's picked uh, Bosa's brain. And Bosa said, I really like our outside line or our edge rushing group. And uh, he's like, Tuli's going to – I think Tuli's in for a big year. So um, usually I kind of listen more to the players when it comes to that kind of stuff because they know exactly um, the guys that uh, – and Bosa's always been the guy. Like Bosa from the beginning said, hey, watch out for Justin Herbert. Like this guy is going to be – like incredible he's gonna be lights out i remember people were like well tyrod taylor's your quarterback well yeah yeah, yeah. but justin herbert's lights out and it's like some people kind of didn't forget remember that and i remember that and i'm like oh wow okay so joey that's why against kansas city that week too i'm like oh wait joey told us that this guy was going to be impressive so um but yeah those those two guys i think uh should have an impact um i don't think you want uh uh, what's that? Max Dugan to have any impact this year? Uh, <laughs> obviously, so I hope not. <laughs> no, but uh, but you know, McFadden. I think McFadden. I mean, obviously, no injuries or anything to the offensive line, but I think McFadden could potentially be a uh, Jamari Sawyer. Um, he he's. I mean, and again, no pads, no nothing, but uh, he's looked pretty solid. And they said he's kind of picked it up as well. But Darius Davis, for some reason, I kind of have a feeling that they might try and use him as a gadget player on offense as well not just as a returner. So that might be uh, that might be something to monitor. And maybe he could be one of those guys that just takes an end around and uh, and just adds a new element to your offense. The way the Chargers have kind of – they've been missing it. I know they wanted Joe Reed to do that a couple of years ago, but he just couldn't say hell. He did – I remember against the Jets, he took an end around and he scored a touchdown. Then after that, you really didn't hear about him. So uh, they're, I think they're hoping that Darius Davis turns into that ultimate uh, Swiss Army knife for their offense. I'm happy you said something about like there's a huge difference between a player saying something and a coach saying something because we're in the gas up season right now. Yeah. You know, where every press conference is like every single guy? Chiefs receiver looks really good in practice. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. That's that's my biggest takeaway. Yeah. There's always one rookie that they're like, he's a second coming of Christ. You know, he's like the Michael <laughs> Jordan of football. And you're like, dude, congratulations. Yeah. I'm gonna call him Jesus and wash his feet already. Um <laughs> so Obviously, a big sign we had this offseason was Eric Kendricks coming from Minnesota Vikings. He, a uh, big leader, veteran. Have you kind of noticed his leadership at all on the field in that defense? Yes, he's still kind of getting his feet wet. And have you noticed that with that um, linebacker group? I saw, I think it was uh, Murray had a good quote about him the other day of how nice it is to have Kendricks in the, in the locker room and in that um, linebacker group. So a little bit about yeah. his kind of effect on the field. Yeah, Bosa said that it's like having another quarterback on the field because you already have Derwin and you have him. I think Kendricks is the one wearing the green dot. So he's the mm-hmm. one calling out everything. He's the guy that's going to be the eyes and ears of uh, Brandon Staley. So uh, that's going to be really interesting to see kind of how it goes. The dynamic so far, like I said, uh, and I, I don't mean to sound like a coach because uh, I think when the pads come on, I think it's going to be different. But you can tell the players are really uh, – they've taken to Eric Hendricks. They like him. I mean, uh, Keenan and him were joking. So Keenan had just en- uh, ended his press conference, and he's like, I know you guys You guys want to talk to somebody with real hair or whatever, and Eric Hendricks comes up, and they're joking around. So Eric said he's really taken to the team. He likes these guys. Uh, it was funny. He actually said – he's like uh, – I think his quote was, uh, I want J- Justin to be a little bit more arrogant this year. Like now that he got his money and everything, but more arrogant, arrogant when he throw when he scores touchdowns or or this and that. And I'm like, oh wow, he wants a heel turn from Justin. Uh, but uh, but definitely, I, I think I think they can they they feel his presence on defense. I think they like the addition, and obviously, it's going to help a guy like Kenneth Murray. Who I think is still trying to find his way 
not only in the defense, but in the NFL as well, because there are times that obviously he's had some flash, some good moments, some flashes, and there's been times where he's made mistakes. So I think adding Kendricks has been a good um, – adding a, adding him has been good for Kenneth Murray. We'll see how it is obviously when they play, but uh, – but and they have both have um, they both love cars, so they that's kind of what they've bonded over. So it's going to be good to see kind of Kenneth Murray and uh, and Eric Kendricks moving forward. But Eric Kendricks should really help uh, against the run, especially because that's kind of where the Chargers have been lacking um, a defensive presence. So if if he can be that guy that helps stop the run and then can still do kind of what Drew Tranquil did, which was being able to blitz and and kind of cause disruption uh, for the opposing quarterback then uh, the charge should be in a good place. But yeah, I know that the, you can tell the players really like Eric and they like the addition that he's been. And, and like we said, he, Der, we all know Derwin is the leader of this defense, but having a voice like Eric in there is just going to help uh, it out even more. Chargers have now leadership on every single position uh, on the, uh, on the defensive side of the football. One of my biggest concerns going into the season was Khalil Mack and his age. Like we, you know, obviously, you know, father times undefeated, so when you see Khalil Mack right now, how does he look? Uh, you know, has age started to catch up with them, even just in, in shorts and T-shirts? I don't think so. I mean, the thing is, too, like, I think Monday uh, should be pretty interesting. I mean, when they put the pads on and he has to go up against Rashawn Slater and, and guys like that, I think that should be more telling. But I think last year what really kind of slowed him down a little bit was the fact that he didn't have Joey on the other side if Joey can be healthy the whole year and Khalil can be healthy the whole year, I think that'll help Khalil get, uh, I, I think that'll help Khalil um, kind of keep it going a little bit. Cause I, I still think that he was in, I, 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 he surprised me the way he played last year. And I feel like he could get even better this year. It's just going to be, can they um, limit the, the unnecessary stops? Like, uh, you, like, what am I trying to say? My bad. So the, uh, like the unnecessary things where he has to be on uh, I think they need to save him more for those passing downs for uh, other things like that. And not just, uh, and not use them. Like you want to have a quality backup behind him because you don't want him taking all the snaps and, and you kind of want to limit uh, everything that he does because he, I mean, he is up there in age. He's been in the NFL for, um, for obviously uh, uh, 10 years now. So obviously you kind of want to limit um the how much you play him but he's gonna help obviously on the against the run he's gonna help uh in the passing game but i i just think that he should be on a limited uh snap count and especially because you have Thule, you have other guys but it's i think really what 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 it's gonna come down to is chris rumpf chris rumpf you're kind of at that point now where who are you like what are you as a player are you gonna be a guy that's gonna disrupt are you like a leonard floyd that um, you're long, you're aggressive, you're going to be able to get in there, or are you just a good special teams player? And I feel like that's kind of one of the things that the Chargers are going to need to look at. And obviously, Thule, what do they have in him? Is he really going to be a good uh, pass rusher? But um, but I, I that's a, that's my thing. With Khalil, you're going to ha- kind of have to limit him a little bit more just because you want to you wanna save him for those big-time moments, those big – like last year against the Raiders in week one, at the end of the game, he uh, – cause a disruption on Derek Carr that's what you're going to need from him but that's what I mean like you just need to save him and not uh and not tire him out I guess in a sense going back to what you were saying it it made me laugh because Michael Kendricks Eric Kendricks older brother led the Cal defense and then Keenan Allen led the Cal offense so I wonder if they have that connection between Eric and Keenan what do you think Brandon Saley needs to do to keep his job past this season last show we're talking about coaches on the hot seat all three of us agreed that Brandon Staley is absolutely on the hot seat what does he need to do to keep his job? Um, they need to make the divisional game. I mean, they need to, they they need a, a, at least a playoff win. I think. I mean, what happened last year? I get it. I understand. Uh, obviously, uh, Jeff Miller wrote a good piece in the LA Times about how um, he went to go seek the guidance of Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr obviously had lost three uh, one uh, in the finals to the Cavs, and and uh, he kind of he spent a couple of days uh, during their playoff. Um, series, I think, against Sacramento. And uh, he kind of picked Steve Kerr's brain a little bit and then kind of saw what um, – and kind of wanted to see – get a different perspective. So, um, so I mean, that's something that should be interesting to see what he does. But I think he needs to make it to the divisional game at least. I mean, 
when you need to win a playoff game, it's like stepping stones. Like the first season, you didn't make the playoffs. This year, you made the playoffs, but you lost on the wild card. Now you need to show a little bit more. I mean, it's it's a stepping stone. And I think anything else, it, like if you don't make the playoffs, I think that's going to be – it's going to be rough uh, to kind of tell – your franchise like hey we didn't make the playoffs but like we're gonna bring back everybody and we're gonna try and run it one more time i think that's gonna be hard especially when you kind of are going up in a sense and then to come back down i mean it's hard to tell uh, a fan base uh and obviously um but you you're gonna need a playoff win and and uh i i really do think that this team has some special pieces to it i think it's one of the most talented teams in the nfl but it's like we've always said. I mean, you got you both have been around uh, for years, and you know the Chargers are the what if team. Like, what if Marlon McCree doesn't fumble? What if uh, I don't know? What if uh, Nate you know, Kading makes a field goal one time? Ex- yeah, Nate. Kading, time. There you go, Nate Kading. Like, there's always what ifs, and that's what this team has kind of been for years. And it's like, okay, can this year be not the what if? Like. What if they can stay healthy? No, if they stay healthy this year, they should be a pretty good team. And and uh, and obviously their schedule is pretty grueling. I mean, the the back end of it, the back end of it is is really going to show you a lot. But the beginning, if you can jump out, uh, maybe only losing one game, one, two, three games in the first like nine, then you're off to a great start. But uh, but it's all going to be about discipline, uh, how they perform on the field and can they stay healthy? If they got if they got these guys and everybody stays healthy, they should be able to be a solid team in the NFL just because of all the talent that they have. And I mean, you know, at one point, Kansas City is gonna like fall a little bit and they're gonna struggle and and it's gonna kind of be like, okay, ever since Patrick Mahomes got here, even before Patrick Mahomes got here, we've been making these long AFC championships, Super Bowls, divisional games. Like it's gonna take a toll on some of their bodies coming up soon. And I mean, these guys need to be ready because I think, like I said, I think in this division, talent, talent wise, the Chargers have the most talented team in the AFC West. But it's can you put all the crap that happened last year behind you? Can you come into this season and can one, can he coach up to par and make sure that you're not making the same uh, mistakes that you made the first two years? Two, can they stay healthy? And three, um, can you stop the run? I think those three things are going to be critical. We all know Justin Herbert is going to be in contention for the M- I think he's going to be in contention for the MVP. Uh, I think this team is going to be really good, but it's just going to be if those three components come together for them, then they should be uh, they should be good or they should be Gucci, as the kids like to say nowadays, uh, <laughs> yeah. moving forward this season. They're going to have a lot of riz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Dun, dun. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what what one well, last question before you go? Yeah, yeah. Um, Justin Herbert signs huge extension, 52 and a half million per year, 262 and a half if we have all together. Um, yeah. did you offer up your Venmo? Yeah, right. No, okay. you know what's funny? Ten bucks for lunch. Obviously, uh obviously the the uh they jumped water on him the other day or Gatorade on him, and some kids asked him, like, oh, can I have your cleats? And he's like, Oh, yeah, sure. And he gives them the cleats. And I asked him, I'm like, oh, wow. He's like, well, I'm not going to use them anymore. And I'm like, I was thinking, why isn't he going to use them? But I'm like, ah, because of the gate, it had Gatorade in them. I'm like, so yeah, because then the, the for the next two or three, the now the next the last two practices, I could hear guys go, Can I have your cleats? And he's like, No, sorry. No, so like, <laughs> and it's just funny. Like, people try and like say all kinds of like one kid I told him, Hey, today's my birthday. He's like, Really? Today's your birthday? He's like, Yeah, what's today's date? Uh <laughs> It's yeah, like, I saw that. Come on, like that be better him. if you're gonna ask for it. But you know, it's funny. The day that I was right next to him, the fence was starting to fall over because people were pushing and shoving and trying to get autographs. And like people from the back, some guy was like, "Oh, can you sign? Uh, can you sign my baby?" Somebody's like, "Will you date my daughter?" I'm like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, "This is uh, this is crazy." The only other time I've seen that fence almost fall over was a couple of years ago when Drew Brees came. Uh, to camp and uh, Breeze went over and he signed autographs for about an hour and that fence was starting to fall over. And one guy, actually, uh, I know a lot of, a lot of things are being made about autographs right now. One guy kept on getting Drew Breeze assigned different things for him. And uh, a security guard for the saints comes up. He's like, Drew, he's just going to sell them online. And he goes, have I already signed this guy? He's like, dude, you've signed like six jerseys of his. Oh, and he like moves on and because the guy kept on like he had a guy behind him and he would just go like like he would exchange and go and and you're just like, dude, come on. Like he's like, 
I'm going to keep at least one of them. And I'm, <laughs> I'm like, Come on. You're, you're the worst. But yeah, I know it's like the, the heat and then the gate getting moved. I mean, that's crazy. But yeah, I wish, uh, I, I wish, uh, some of that money was coming my way, but unfortunately, uh, <laughs> it's not. But wow, he he honestly, and it's well deserved, and everybody's excited for him. Keenan even said he is like, I can't wait till he invites us to dinner. So, and Justin even said, I think I owe quite a few dinners uh, on this team. So it's gonna be interesting to see where uh, Justin ends up taking his teammates. But definitely, everybody said it the same thing. Well deserved. Uh, they're excited for him. Uh, the one funniest part I thought was. They asked Austin Eckler to do a video, charge charge your social media. And I was kind of like, oh, I'm like, okay. (laughs) I'm like, read the room. But uh, but yeah, no, Justin definitely deserves it. He's the face of this franchise. There's a reason why the other day when I was there, the line was down, uh, down. There was like, there's like an elementary school. It was past the elementary school. Like there was a very long line to get in. Why? Because everybody's there to see Justin Herbert. Everybody wants to see what, he's going to do and and uh and that's why last year they were able to do some good things they were able to fill up that stadium more than people expected it's because everybody's there to see number 10 and everybody like these this new generation of kids they're all seeing what he can do and they're like oh my god i love justin herbert i want to be like some dad i saw him he had a saint's hat on and a saint's jacket and uh, i'm like oh you're here at the camp he's like my kid's a huge justin herbert fan I'm like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, he won't shut up about him. He's like, I'm a Saints fan. I try to get him to be a Saints fan. He saw Justin Herbert play, and he's like, I love Justin Herbert. We live here, so I brought him to come and see Justin Herbert. I'm like, oh, wow, that's awesome. So, yeah, little by little, uh, they're starting to they're starting to make an impact. Don't believe the, I, I tell people, don't believe the narrative of oh, they don't have fans or anything like that. Because uh, I've seen I've seen the Las Vegas stadium a couple of times without fans. I've seen. SoFi, when the other team is there, when the Rams are in there, I've seen a sea of red before with 49ers uh, fans and other stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah, it's not just the – like the Chargers play the Cowboys on Monday Night Football. I bet you the ESPN is going to try and show, oh, look, like there's so many Cowboys. Well, yeah, Cowboy fans fill up whatever stadium you go to. They're going to fill them up. There's a lot of uh, hopeless romantic Cowboy fans out there. Uh, so, Definitely, uh, definitely something interesting. But yeah, Justin definitely deserves that contract. Fernando, as always, man, thank you so much for your time. I know we're going to have you on uh, as we get closer to the season, but we, we can't thank you enough for giving us your time today. Anytime, guys. I appreciate you guys and uh, have a good rest of your week. And, and thank you guys again for having me on.